You guys hear those Franciscan monks in the background? Uh, it's actually the cafe. <laughs> oh, it does smell really good out here, actually. Guys, we found this random path on Mount Nebo. All right, guys, so we made it to Mount Nebo. I'm sure this was a very arduous hike for Moses back in the days, but it only <laughs> took us 30 minutes to drive up here by car from the Dead Sea. So this is a historical and religiously significant site because Moses came here and summited Mount Nebo to see the promised land, which he never actually entered. And then there's rumors or theories that he's buried here. That's never been proven. There was a Byzantine church built here that lasted many, many centuries. I can't remember how many off the top of my head. It no longer stands here, but you can see mosaics somewhere from the original church. And then in the 1930s, the Franciscans came in. They're the owners of this house. They kind of maintain the property and have a church up here. And we're really grateful to visit. Also, it costs three JOD each to get in. Here's the conversion. Entering Mount Nebo is not included in the Jordan Pass, but we figured since we were driving by, we thought it was worth it. All right, guys, like Patricia mentioned earlier, there was a Byzantine church where this Franciscan one now stands. And this is the fortified door from the Byzantine monastery. All right, guys, and here are some ruins of the Byzantine church that was once here. And here's some more. to think this is the place that Moses saw the promised land but on a clear day well on not a clear day Israel's right there and you can see Jerusalem as well where exactly I'm not sure but the Dead Sea is right there and then on a clear day you can see Bethlehem Jericho so on and so forth Back in the car, I thought that that was a lovely stop and I would definitely recommend doing it if you have the time and you're in the area.
Good morning, everybody. It is the next day. We got to Jirash last night, as you know, and we slept here. We slept at the Ruins Wall Hotel, which is a hostel, and we had a little private room. This is where we slept, and we have a shared bathroom in the hallway. They made us breakfast this morning, and now we're packing up and getting ready to explore Jirash itself, the Roman ruins, and we're so excited to take you with us. So let's go, Maddie. Put a shirt on. <laughs> Alright, guys. So we're about to enter Hadrian's Gate, who was a Roman emperor that actually visited here. Basically, Jirash is one of the older Roman cities and it was known as the Pompeii of the Middle East. Basically it was formed during the 4th century BC and about 20,000 people lived here. So let's go check it out. Behind us you can see Hadrian's Gate. It's quite impressive. I cannot believe we didn't lead with this, but I guess if you made it this far, then it's an extra surprise for you. This is the largest and most well-preserved Roman ruins in the world outside of Rome. So that's what makes Drash so special, and that's why there's so many people here to visit. It's pretty remarkable. All right, guys, we're standing on top of some sort of steps here and maybe some sort of buildings. And then in the distance, we can actually see the Temple of Artemis up the hill. I found a path on top of the ruins, so I'm just casually walking around on the top of some cool Roman ruins and giraffe. Nice. There's Paddy P over there. Okay, those steps over there, it actually looks like they used to go all the way around this whole thing. So I'm wondering if this was like a chariot track or like horse racing track. Because there's like remnants of some more stairs over on these ends as well. Pretty cool to think about, that's huge. All right guys, so up here behind me this way where you can see the columns is the Zeus temple and I'm a little bit confused about why it's called the Zeus temple because I'm pretty sure in Roman mythology Zeus's equivalent is Jupiter. Anyway, let me know if I'm right about that or not, but these columns are cool. Hello everyone. Here you see Corinthian columns, which means that the cap of the column is decorated with things like leaves and flowers, whereas Ionic columns will be decorated with scrolls and Doric columns are usually smooth. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Yo, know, seeing all these columns laying down on the archaeological side is so cool. Hey, you doing, Patty? Dang, that row of columns is really cool. I spy with my little eye Julius Caesar. All right, guys, this is Matt Cam. I'm exploring without Patricia about three feet from the side of the road. <laughs> but I see a cool arch and I want to go there and then I want to go to the top of that. Oh, I like a bunch of cool arches back here. Here is said arch. 
And I found some stairs actually. This is really cool. Whoa. Alrighty, this is beautiful, but I think I'm done exploring for now, so I'll head back to Penafee. It's really cool to visit Roman ruins like this because it's not necessarily good for the preservation of the artifacts, but you're just allowed to go like walk and touch anything, which is certainly not allowed in Rome. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> A little bit more generous here. All right, guys, I just did Tomb Raider ring right over here and you literally cannot see it from the main road. So now I feel like an explorer. <laughs> see what I'm talking about guys? See what I'm talking about? Those are ionic columns, the scrolls, as compared to the ginormous Corinthian ones over here. And this right here is the Temple of Artemis. So we'll go inside and check it out now. All right guys, can anybody clarify if the Jordanians are just mistranslating Greek god names uh, instead of Roman ones? Because Artemis is a Greek god and Zeus is a Greek god. So I'm not sure why they're Roman temples or were the Romans at this stage just like using Greek gods instead of their own? So anybody that can help out, let us know. Alright guys, this is the Temple of Artemis. Souvenir shop. <laughs> yes, also a souvenir shop. Hey Matt, I can help you with that question you had earlier. A little bit of a reading of a sign just wonders for you. There is no mistranslation. It certainly was that Artemis of Jerash was named after Artemis, the Greek goddess. And that's because Artemis of Jerash was a local <laughs> goddess. And I guess that Artemis of Jerash was named after her because she had similar attributes like hunting and other similar characteristics. So there's the solution to our problem. Right guys, so if you're visiting Jerash, you could do a tour. You can get a tour guide at the visitor center. We just opted not to. Whatever you do, I recommend just kind of wandering off on your own. If you just come like 20 feet off of the main road, you see that there's this other ruin right here and then there's one arch but then if you look down further there's another arch so this ruin is just stories and stories deep underground yeah and it's really really cool because you can't see it from the main road it just looks like a field of grass and flowers so make sure to just wander off and explore this is absolutely incredible i mean the ancient city of rome and rome is similar to this but you definitely can't just go walking off in the fields and running through the ruins so take the opportunity while you can i guess Isn't it that there was like a whole street under there? Mm -hmm. Okay guys, what is this thing? It literally has like a turtle shell, but it's a gecko. That's crazy. I wonder if it's from the Roman era. That thing is weird. These things are like a lot bigger than they look on camera though. I don't think this is the way that most people go. That was so
Also, there are a lot of people here right now, but they're all on tours, and I guess the tour route just takes you on the main road. We really feel like we're the only ones exploring the Roman ruins right now, just because we have all this to ourselves. They're all up there. The outskirts. But nobody is in here. Patty and Maddie tip. Okay guys, basically this is like a giant water tower. The aqueducts would come here and then they would serve the city's water needs from here. It's called a nymphaeum, I guess. They had to keep expanding because all the Romans wanted baths. You guys, we're back on the normal tour route, but these columns are just so epic looking. All right guys, so we are heading out of Jirash. Definitely recommend stopping here if you're coming to Jordan. We're driving back to Amman today. We're going to drop off our rental car at the airport, but we're not actually leaving today because for our next country, there's a flight today, but it's like an eight hour travel day. And the flight tomorrow is one and a half hours direct. I'll leave you in suspense as to what country that is. You'll have to watch the next vlog. I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this vlog because all we're doing is driving after this. And then this wraps up our Jordan series as well. So I hope you guys enjoy these vlogs. I hope they were helpful. Please let us know if you have any questions or tips. We're always happy to hear from you all. Also, I promised a few vlogs ago that at the end of our Jordan series, I would put a screenshot of how much money we saved by using the Jordan Pass. Again, get the Jordan Pass if you're coming to visit because it includes your visa fee and all your fees to get into all the tourist locations. So these are all the things that we did and this is how much money we saved. All right, guys, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching and we will see you in our next country, which is country number 17 on the Sierra Travel. So stick around. Love you so much. It's like hunting. <laughs> what else? Pretty much. Um, Don't take it <laughs> There's a fly on your shirt. Go like this with the mic. <laughs>